disgruntledduck.com. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, thank you very much for joining me again. Uh, last video we started on this one. All right, it's the uh, the Lehman Rust tank. Um, last last episode we did the build. This episode we're going to do the uh, the painting. Hang on, let me just uh, sip a grape soda. Mm. Last uh, yeah, last time we did the build. This time we're going to do the painting. Now, depending on how good my video editing skills are, you should about now be seeing a picture of the kind of colour scheme that I want to do. Um, I think this looks really cool, and that's the thing I love about these uh, these Games Workshop fancy stuff. You can do whatever you want. So that's what we're going to try and aim for. Um, as you see, I've got a bit of branding up now, so uh, I'm pretty happy, um, and hopefully these videos are going to come out a bit more often now. I've got a few uh, few ideas in the work and uh, I've got a little bit of time on my hands so uh, hopefully if you enjoy them uh, we can get some more get some more out for you so let's get down the bench let's get this painted uh, be the same as last time gonna splice up the video edit it out nicely and uh, cut some of that time down and give you some uh, yeah just give you some fun and games while we go along all right so enjoy so now you can see I've given it an all-over undercoat in German grey Given the tracks a uh, plain black undercoat as well, and now I'm taking it off the screen so you can't see it. So there you go, it already looks alright. So time to get down some painting. Alright, I'm going to be using mostly Tamiya. Uh, XF59 is Desert Yellow, XF18 Medium Blue, XF2 Flat White, and that's not a coffee. XF56 is gunmetal, I believe. And finally, I've got this little red pot of Humbrol number 3238, sorry. Bit of hairspray. Again, I love this technique for chipping. So just spray the model all over. Be quite liberal with this stuff. Don't be shy at all. Well, I'm not anyway. So we've done that now. Hairspray's dried. I'm now gonna start giving it a coat of the XF59. Now I've also added a little bit of white to this just to make it a little bit lighter because we're going to be weathering later. It's going to, whatever colour you put on to begin with is going to end up a bit darker after you've varnished and you've weathered. So yeah, we've lightened up a little bit. Um, as you can see, I've got that one Humbrol paint. Now there's no specific reason for that. I just happen to have that Humbrol paint and I ain't going to go and buy another paint when I don't need to. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll use a bit of everything. I do prefer Tamiya, especially for spraying. Uh, Humbrol and more of the acrylic, some of the uh, army painter paints for brush painting. But definitely for the airbrushing, yeah, I wouldn't, I've, I've even, I've tried Mr. Color recently. That wasn't too bad. I need to practice with that. So again, with these, I've thinned it to a ratio of about 50-50 really. Just some cheap cellulose thinner. A couple of drops of the flow improver as well. That stops the stops the airbrush clogging up a bit. Oh, we get a nice coat all over that. Make sure it's all covered. Make sure you can't see any of that undercoat through it. I think that's about done. I probably could have cut a bit of this video out because this is pretty boring actually now. Yeah, I'm still showing you exactly uh, just something really slow and boring. But there you go, that's it, air, that's it airbrush. But I mean, that's pretty much in real time. So that's taken, what, two, three minutes to coat the tank completely? It's mad crazy fast compared to brush painting. So I've now masked it off, masked off the front using a bit of the XF2 flat white. Um, and you know, rookie mistake, I overfilled the cup way too much. I put way too much paint in there. And you're gonna see what happens in a minute. Um, not one of my brightest moves. So flick it round, we're gonna paint the other side quickly. It's both sides painted, and there you go. Paint everywhere from shaking it. So I've sorted that mess out. Now I'm gonna go on with the reds. Uh, I've just, just done it by eye, stuck these strips on. I haven't measured them or anything. And 
and again the other side done. So next job is going to be, there we are, on to the next job. And again you see I've overfilled the cup and I've spilt blue paint all over my little turntable. So just, oh, something I really need to learn from my own mistakes. So I've masked it off now, masked off those front stripes, masked off a rough camouflage pattern. Um, I've put some gloves on now, so I'll just, I'll just cover myself and everything with paint otherwise. So again, this is just, I'm just using a real cheap basic airbrush to do this. I think this airbrush, this airbrush actually came with the compressor. Um, there you go, so there's the tape off. Straight away, that doesn't look too bad. So what I'm doing now is we need to activate the hairspray. So just a wet brush. Um, I've put, I laid quite a lot of paint down onto this. So I'm brushing away quite hard. And I mean, all in all, this is going to be about six or seven minutes worth of work. And we're going to get quite a nice outcome. So anyway, yeah, it's a cheap airbrush. I'm using, I've got about three cheap airbrushes. Not one of them cost over 20 pounds, say. There we go. So there's the effect we've got. Already looks weathered. So yeah, straight away, I'm happy with that. That's... For a little bit of work, a bit of gloss varnish, for a little bit of work you get a lovely effect. So basically now we're going to start applying our washes and etc etc. Gloss varnish to seal it and then whatever we do on top of that, none of that paint's going to flake off anymore. So quickly while that's drying I'm just dry brushing the tracks and the exhaust pipes with a little bit of uh, gun metal, stick them on. So now the varnish is dry, they're stuck on, now we can get onto the, the main part of the weathering. I like to use what I've got in lying around rather than buying new stuff all the time. Uh, this is for modern day desert vehicles but it's going to work perfectly well for our purposes. So I think they call this a pin wash, we're just trying to bring out those panel lines now. So basically try as much as you can to let the wash do the work it will naturally flow into all the recesses I'm trying to be a little bit delicate then we're going to go over that afterwards with just a damp brush when we're using the enamel washes we need to use a bit of white spirit to clean them up afterwards um, and we should get a really nice effect so just a bit of patience and concentration for this now maybe just enjoy the relaxing music Again, we could have probably speeded this clip up a little bit, but you get the general idea of what we're doing. This is the more relaxing part of the hobby. Okay, so now we've done the pin wash. Got this Humbro Rust Wash. So again, this is really easy. It's just a little dab, a little line, and then we use a damp brush again, a damp brush with white spirit just to streak out those lines and uh, sort of blend them in so there we go I'm quite happy the weathering looks I'm really happy with the weathering we're gonna get on to our little what is that heat gun a fl flamethrower all right for this one I'm using this is an old games workshop paint uh, I'm done a, I know they change their paints quite a few times since I got into the hobby so this is bulk gun metal I've got this little dry brush it's quite a flat end quite a wide flat end so a little bit of paint on the tip rub that off so you want a really minimal amount of paint on there and then just flick it over it I probably should actually be there we go that's a bit better you can actually see what I'm doing there but just really gently really lightly flick it over the top of that black undercoat and that's basically the effect we've got from that that's just a really simple trick it looks awesome there Okay, so I'm just going to paint in this little bit of pipe work. So 
So yeah, this is the real delicate part. Um, it's not so bad, this. Some of the stuff I do, I do now need to use a magnifying glass for, but this wasn't too bad. That looks all right. So there's, there's the finished little guy. Quite simple. So now just a few, just some pigments. So you can either buy these pre-made pigments. Um, I sometimes also have some chalk pastels that I'll crush down to make my own. But this, I've just, you can either brush them on dry or like what I'm doing now, mix a bit of that pigment or get the, make the brush damp. Um, I've not tried it water, I generally use a little bit of white spirit so right now in that little part of the bottom I'm mixing up some of the pigment with a little bit of white spirit to make a paste um, one of the benefits of the white spirit you, you want to wear a mask when you're doing most of this stuff especially when you're using these spirits but it evaporates very quickly a lot quicker than water so the liquid part of it goes very quickly and you're left solely with that pigment on the vehicle so you can see it looks quite damp and wet at the moment So I'm just going to go around all of the tracks and um, because I've already got that rust wa rust wash, well, I need to put my teeth in, the rust on the body using the enamel wash, um, I'm only really going to work this rust pigment onto the tracks. Again, I mean, this is only a third video, so we're going to get to a stage when uh, these videos are going to be trimmed down and look awesome. Well. There we go, so we've cut, we've cut out a bit of that time. That's all the tracks done with that. So already that's looking all right. You can see it dries pretty quickly. So it's pretty much drying as soon as I put it down. Okay, so next job, we're just gonna rub it off any of the bodywork we don't want it on comes off quite easy we're just gonna rub the track so it's not so heavy so it's gonna look more like because when the thing is when the tracks are moving any rust that's on the pads is gonna be rubbed off by the ground so it's mostly gonna be in the joints between them uh, the track links so I don't think that looks too bad so far And now, because I've, I've got a few rust colors, I bought a rust and dust set of pigments, because I just love, I love rust. I think it's just beautiful. So we're gonna do slightly lighter colors now, um, give it a little bit of depth. And again, I apologize for the angle of the video, but uh, we'll get better in time. see straight away and you can see it, the dry pigment there's no sheen on it at all as opposed to what we had with the white spirit now again brush that away we don't need too much on there and then an even light a little bit just to really highlight some of those some of those crevices that's a lovely word, isn't it, crevice? Again, we're just going to wipe away anything we've got on the bodywork that we don't want to be there. And that's looking pretty good all in all. Turret on. A couple of final little bits of rust, just a tiny bit on the gun. Yeah. 
and I'm quite happy with that. Built, painted and weathered, probably about four hours that whole project's taken. It's been really fun, looks awesome. So there we go, a little bit of a close up on details. Considering I don't really do fantasy vehicles, I'm really happy with how this has turned out. So, hope you enjoyed this one, eh, guys? Because I really did enjoy this. So, there we go, guys. That's, uh, that's it built, that's it painted. I've got to be honest, I'm quite happy with that. We're going to call that done. There's the little guy. Um, that weathering's done now. It doesn't look too bad, you know? For the look I was going for, I'm quite happy with that. So, uh... Yeah, I had a good time building that. That's, I, lo I do love Games Workshop stuff. They're just so much detail in there. So uh, we're going to call that done. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, as always, like I say, um, give us a like, subscribe, turn on notifications um, to see what we're doing next. On the outro to this video, I'm going to stick up some more high-def pictures of that tank um, just for you to go through. And uh, hopefully, I'll see you next time. So bye for now. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment.